on one side. Michael Andrzejewski. Michael Andrzejewski on the other side. Short kick going to Andrzejewski's side. He's got the ball at about the 11 yard line. Brings it up to about the 30, 27, where Homewood will take over on its own 27 yard line, first and 10. Good tackle made for Irwin that time by Patrick Renda for the Eagles. I guess, Brent, we need to go ahead and set the Homewood starting offense. Brian Greer is the split in number 11. Tackle number 73, Chris Lusko. Number 79 is the guard, Jonathan Hammaker. The center is 66, Chris Cowan. The guard, 71, Steve Carpenter. On the other tackle, number 64, Eric Rebels, who of course plays both ways. Let's get this first play from scrimmage off, and then we'll set the rest of the offense for you. Jay Roberson's going to put it up to pass. Decides to keep it. Subbing by number 43, 42, Patrick Renda. Homewood crossing them up that time, starting out with a pass play. Usually, well, in the last three games, Homewood has opened every game with a with a running play of some some sort. Uh, usually going to uh, Robert Davis. Understand, Eric Rebel may have been shaken up on that kickoff play, and Jason Zarzar is in now in replace of Eric Rebel, who started at tackle. On a second and ten. They give to Robert Davis around right in. Robert's got the first down and much, much more. He's off to the races. Touchdown! That is not a definitely. 73 yard run from scrimmage on second and 10, Fred. Well, that blows the Irwin theory of stopping Robert Davis and stopping Homewood right out of the water right now. Robert Davis going 73 yards. That'll boost that 465 yard average just a little bit. If they played 10, 12 minute quarters, it looks like he did it in about a minute and 20 seconds. Yeah, with timeout on the field now, 1040 remaining in the first quarter. Homewood's up by six to nothing over the Irwin Eagles. White Wayland had a magnificent block to free Robert around the right side. Looks like West Steen in to attempt the extra point. Jay Roberson holds it. The kick is up. We see that it's no good. You know, Wes is playing with a severely sprained ankle and is not starting on defense tonight. Uh, so it remains to be seen whether he can continue to kick. Hurt that angle, I believe, in the third quarter last week against a uh, Thompson team. Third quarter. I was sorry I missed the game with you guys last Outstanding week. effort. Outstanding effort. Great. Let me go ahead and finish setting that offense for the folks at home. Uh, because Kenneth Evans is injured tonight, Jamil Bullard uh, may be in starting. But we're just going to have to see how that develops. Of course, Robert Davis is the running back, number 30. Dwight Whalen, who had the fantastic block on the right side that time to free Robert Davis, is the flanker, number 84. And, of course, Jay Roberson is the quarterback, number 10. We'll set the Irwin offense for you, too. Uh, working from... Uh, the schedule that we got just before the uh, just before the game, and we'll do that after the kickoff. Wes has the ball teed up, ready to kick it off from his own forty. Over to the right side, taken by number twenty-four for Irwin. Jason Horn goes out of bounds. Owen playing a little tentative to say the least right now, Barry. The 73 yard run with a minute 20 gone in the game will somewhat unnerve you. What they need to do is put together a, some type of driving off, a couple of first downs, get their feet on the ground, or else uh, turn the ball back over to Homewood, deep in their territory, or even midfield with Robert Davis going 73 yards on the first possession. Could set the tone for tonight's game. Jody Duncan brings him out. Jody's the quarterback number 23 for Irwin. He plays both ways as free safety and quarterback. The gift is first man through. Let's see if we can spot these numbers for you. I believe that's Jason Horn. Okay. Used to be Brad Brasher. Brad Brasher up there. Uh, first man through. Uh, Damon Southard on the stop that time, and do I see Eric Rebels is back in? Yeah, Rebels is back in the game now, so apparently that injury only a temporary waylay. I want to mention, too, as we're early in the game here, Fred, that we're working with three television cameras for your viewing enjoyment tonight.
Brandon Southland with that stop on number 35. Chris Wilson. Well, good pursuit no that on the play. Good pursuit that time by Damon. I don't I don't know that Brad Brasher thought New Damon was even back there. He saw daylight in front of him. All of a sudden it came to a to a sudden stop. Well it's gonna bring up third and ten. The fullback for Irwin is number twenty four, Jason Horn, and their halfback is number twenty two, Brad Brasher. They've got a wing back, number thirty five, Chris Wilson. like Duncan's passing and it's incomplete to Chris Wilson out of the flat. Why, uh, Eugene Oliver on the coverage over there on the uh, left side of the Homewood defensive alignment. So that brings up fourth and ten and Irwin will put into the game for Homewood and number 11 Brian Greer and he's going to drop back to receive the punt along with Robert Davis. Along with Robert Davis. A high snap and a quick punt by Jody Duncan for Irwin. Comes down to Brian Greer who takes it in on his own on the 45-yard line of Irwin. We had one man between him and the goal line. 23. That would be Jody Duncan and do it all man for Irwin tonight. Well, I was mentioning about the cameras. We have cameras on both 20-yard lines, and we have a camera up on top of the press box tonight on the 50-yard line. We may even uh, dazzle you and bedazzle you with some slow motion instant <laughs> replay before it's all over. Shouldn't miss an angle with our crack photography staff. Jay Roberson looking at first and 10. Give to Robert Davis, but it looks like Robert slipped right as he crossed the 20-yard line. So call it a gain of three. Jay Wigley, number 68 for Irwin on the tackle that time. We'll call it uh, second and about seven. Long six, possible. Jay gets to Robert off the right side. Robert up to the 10-yard line. We'll have to see where they mark it down, but it looks like that's going to be first and 10. Patrick Renda, number 42 on the stop, along with number 46, Jason Hennington for Irwin. Dusty Smith leading the way with a tackle that time, with a block that time. Right, Dusty Smith tonight replacing Kenneth Evans with that injured ankle. Uh, injured last week against Thompson. Dusty's also. playing on uh, jersey number one, is that right tonight? That's, that's good. Yeah. Normally plays the number 51 jersey. Playing the first man through tonight. You know, Fred, that's something that's, uh, that's probably worth talking about. The tremendous uh, difference in blocking assignments when you move from a linebacker position into a, to a fullback position in ju with just a week's preparation. It is. There's a lot of things that are similar in that in a, in a linebacker position and a blocking fullback situation. A lot of times coaches tell you one thing, hit somebody and knock them down. Step on offense, right. you have to be careful it how has, you do it. It has to be a specific block and you have to be careful how you do it. Well, we missed a great shot of the Homewood cheerleading squad there. We're going to try and pay more attention to those cutaway cameras that we've got because uh, that this really is a, a super way to bring you high school football. Give you some field level shots here and also some uh, shots from up above. We're looking at about second and five, now a long five. Robert's off right tackle, and the going gets tough down inside the five-yard line. Looks like he's down to about the four. Sure does. Interesting angles on that, Barry, in that Robert Davis from our previous angles looked as though he had quite a bit of running room. Not the case on that play, and our angle on that shot showed it. That hole, the hole he apparently had to start with, closed quickly. Irwin filling the gaps nicely. Alexander Adamson into the game for Homewood. Damon Southward in also for a little extra blocking help in this Jay right Roberson side. Roberson looks at uh, third and about three. And through the middle, Robert Davis off left tackle for the second Homewood score of the night. Just absolutely magnificent blocking on the line. Looks like they may go for two this time. Yep. Let's take a look at that again if we can. We do have the uh, instant replay capability tonight. All the way through, right off the left tackle there. 
Back to live action now. It does appear they are going for two. Jay has them up on the line. A pass. That's uh, that's uh, Alexander Adams. Hit. So the point after attempt is good. That makes it 14 to nothing with timeout on the field and six minutes and 34 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The score is Homewood 14 and Irwin nothing. Now, Alexander Adamson was just not even noticed on that play. Not I think at all. everybody was looking for you-know-who. They certainly were, and, and with good reason. The way he started out tonight's game, uh, I don't even want it. Walter Stadium's not looking for Robert Davis. And again, the Homewood coaching staff doing a fine job of, of mixing up their play calling, using these, I guess you would call them role players. Uh, Alexander Adamson slipping out from a position on the left-hand side, probably lined up as a tight end. I haven't seen the replays yet. I would suspect lining up as a tight end, which is the best location for him to do that. Uh, Jay Roberson, good, doing, uh, good job on the fake, drawing those linebackers in close and hitting Adamson for the two points. Well, Westy puts his toe into it. It's over on the right side. He's taking it in short. Number 24, Jason Horn, returning the Chris ball. Chris Cowan uh, made the stop that time as the special team comes out. Jason Horn. And that was Jason Horn who took the ball in for Irwin. So Irwin now has it at their own 29-yard line, and they'll move first and 10 from that point. That was a 20-yard return for Horn as Jody Duncan sets to work for the Eagles now. We'll give us the number 22 around the right side. That's Brad Brasher. Coggin, 46. Michael Coggin on the stop for Homewood. Oliver. And Eugene Oliver with the assist. Irwin running from the wing tee used a uh, guard pull that time to prepare a, a hole for Brad Brasher to run there. Gained pretty good yardage, so he gained about, about five yards. Brings up about second and five. Perhaps a third, second and six possibly. We get the pressure again around right side, but guess what? Nothing doing. The door was closed there. Eugene Oliver was right in there with it, and number 48 also, Lee Thompson, was right in there with it. Lee and Eugene just closed the door, and that play not only failed the game, but I believe they lost a yard or two on that one. I believe they did. It looked as though it had some promise when it when it when it started, and as it developed fuller or fully, Oliver and uh, Thompson shut it down. Well, the clock runs with 5 minutes, 25 seconds remaining in the first quarter. If you're just joining us, your score is Homewood 14 and Irwin nothing on two quick strikes by the Homewood offense. Duncan rolls out to pass and just out of the hands of, uh, looks like number 34 for Irwin, Randy Gray. He had his man in the open, but uh, the pass just a little too high. Elvin Skipper defending there, ready to ready to rein him in if it if it got out of control. Difficult pass for a quarterback, Barry. Running to your left, throwing. If you're a right-handed quarterback, you have to turn your body and work not to overthrow the ball because you are moving in that direction. Unfortunately, that time, Jace, Jody Duncan could not adjust and simply overthrew his receiver. Homewood's called a timeout here. Uh, we had Robert Davis and Brian Greer back, but Homewood has timeout and Coach Thorson out on the field, and he looks like he has something to say to the team. So they're going to talk about it for a little bit. Now, I'm not... I'm not sure if they have the... Do they have the official timeouts, the water break timeouts? Are we possibly at that point here? I'm not sure if we're at that point, Barry. Do they have them? I did not see where the signal was, whether Homewood uh, called that timeout or whether it was called an official timeout. This would appear to be a Homewood timeout in that Irwin's at the line ready to go. Yeah, and I believe the weather turning as it has, the, time, the uh, official's timeout would seem to be yeah. needless at this point. I think you're right. Duncan punts. He got his toe into it. Brian Greer signals for a fair catch, and that ball is rolling the wrong way. It'll be down on about the seven-yard line. So Jody Duncan gets a lot of punt and a lot of roll, and Homewood takes over deep in its own territory, I believe, from its seven-yard line. It's yeah. hard to see at this angle, but it looks as though it's going to be on the seven. I believe you're right, Barry. It is at the Homewood seven. Irwin couldn't have asked for a... Uh, 
a better gift at this point in the game to turn the ball over on their side of the field on by not getting the first down to turn it over to a Robert Davis led Homewood offense. Now the officials have time out. That was, by the way, Danny Callis, our statistician down on the sideline, tells us that was a 58-yard punt. Outstanding. That's a pretty significant punt in a high school football game. In a, in a crucial situation for Irwin also. Absolutely. Absolutely. Important, important punt for Irwin. This could be the, uh, the mandatory water break, Barry. At this point, I see the officials yeah, not believe, in any rush to get the teams up to the line and I the coaches are right. out. So this is an official timeout. will not be logged against either school. And this is that water break timeout that, that we've talked about. Um, the, the Alabama High School Athletic Association mandates this. And, and Fred, the question that you brought up is a good one. I'm not sure at what point in the season they determine that the weather has turned and they no longer need the water break. But that is the, that is the result of uh, that, That's what caused this official timeout. Well, it is a fairly comfortable night outside. I would say it's more than uh, 75, 76 degrees possibly. Maybe a just a little warmer. A beautiful night here at all new Walbrook Stadium. And it's great to have uh, great to have our home opener here under such pleasant weather conditions. Nice large crowd. And Irwin bring, bringing some fans with them. High school football making a comeback in the area. Well, with five minutes now remaining in the first quarter, Jay Roberson starts to work and he goes to the man who you would expect him to go to, Robert Davis, around left end. There is a flag on the play. Robert was running to the left side. We'll have to wait and see if we can get a preliminary indication from the official. Would appear to be against Homewood, the official returning to the line of scrimmage. It's like blocking below the knees. There's your defensive alignment uh, on the bench getting some, uh, that looks like Coach Rip Harmon. Is that Coach Harmon talking to him down there? I believe it is. He's telling them what they need to know for the next time they go in. Irwin penalized for blocking below the waist. You can block below the waist in certain, uh, under certain guidelines, certain uh, places on the field. Evidently, Homewood got a little overzealous with their blocking. Well, that was a penalty of half the distance to the goal, was it not, Fred? So it that, was. That pushed them way back, and now facing third down and a long 11 at this point. Looks to be about 14 yards to go. That was, uh, that was Dusty, Dusty, that was Smith. Dusty Smith on the carry that time. Now would be a good time for Jay Roberson to test this Irwin secondary, perhaps looking at uh, Damon Southwood or uh, Alexander Adamson. Well, the pitch out to Robert Davis. He cuts back up the middle. Robert's running hard, and we're going to have to see what kind of spot we get. He's out to about the 18, the way I see it. What was our camera on the 20-yard uh, line? Very, very close. It looks like they might have spotted him just, just a little short. Just to be about third and a yard, less than a yard from the official third down spot. And a good bit less than a yard, about a foot to go, it looks like, at this point. Whalen comes out of the game. Interesting situation that time. Homewood from pass games apparently had Irwin where they wanted them. Uh, a play action pass or some would probably have been the play they called in the pass. And this time they preferred to go with Robert Davis, which kind of tells you their game plan for tonight. They don't think Irwin can stop Robert Davis. The gift to Dusty Smith, first man through. If they mark him where he made it to, we'll have a first down on that play because they mark him right at about the 20-yard uh, line. And that is going to be a first down for Homewood. You know, we might share with you well, we'll share with you this on the next time we see a shot of the cheerleaders. We want to make sure you know who they are. While, we're, uh, while we've got some time, we want to read those names to you. The head cheerleader this year in the 1990-91 squad is Suzanne Graffos, and the co-head is Brooke Dill. Other cheerleaders are Jean Steelman, Jenny Crumpton, Amanda Cook, Jessica Oates, Carrie Rose, Allison Leggett, Allison Grizzle, and Casey Kirby. Mrs. King is the cheerleader sponsor this year. Jay Roberson back to pass on first and ten. Oh, Alexander Adamson just off the tips of his fingers. Just off the tips of his fingers with that pass out to about the 50-yard line. Jay showing good throwing strength that time. A, a good pass by Roberson. How many times have we seen just that pass this year happen just that way? Homewood has a knack for hitting the seam in those zones. They've done it against every team this year, yet unfortunately the ball has just been slightly overthrown or perhaps the receiver has just been slightly underpowered. They've just been a little off on every, on every play. 
But they have hit the seams and he has been in the open. Frank, what's your name? Jake gives to uh, Jake gives to Robert Davis around the left side, but there's nothing going there. A good defense right now for yeah. Irwin. Good stop by Jay Wigley on the uh, on the Irwin defense there. Wigley is a name you're going to be hearing a lot tonight on the Irwin defense because he is uh, he's always in on it. He's one of those guys that seems to go to the ball. Absolutely. He, Irwin playing with uh, not that many seniors. Uh, one, two, three, four seniors on the defensive squad and uh, about the same number on their offensive team. Uh, basically a sophomore junior team as is Homewood. Jay's being rushed. He can't get the ball away and so he's dropped for a loss. So he's dropped that one's right going to be the back. Right at about the two yard line. There's Wigley again. Again, Jay Wigley. Wigley on the stop. So, we're facing fourth and what is it they say? A mile? A mile. Fourth and a mile. Jay Roberson is going to drop back to punt. Wes Steed in to snap the ball back. Wes is the snapper back on punts. Jay is about as far as he can go back into that end zone. It's a good snap. Jay gets the punt away. Oh, it's coming wow. this way. Has to be, depending on the bounce, he gets a sideway bounce. Side the ball goes out of bounds on about the Homewood 31-yard line. We have uh, one minute and 28 seconds now remaining in the first quarter with Irwin in excellent field position. That was only a 27-yard punt. Jay so, we need some stiff necks on the defense. We certainly do. Jay not watching the ball possibly all the way through the, through the motion, coming off the side of his foot and getting a sideline bounce, as you said, to benefit Irwin. Uh, they put together a, a first down last time out, I believe. And, uh, their offense needs to get something going here. On the, uh, on the other hand, that Homewood defense needs to stiffen. Duncan with a pass out on the left side to number 34, Randy Cray. Steed in on the uh, on the stop. West Steed is now playing uh, in that free safety position for Homewood. Elvin Skipper coming over, making a good shot. There you see Robert Davis already. Uh, what would be a full night for most running backs, and we're not even out of the first quarter right now. Robert taking in a little water on the sideline as we go back to action. Well, Jody Duncan for Irwin sends Randy Gray out wide to the left again. Whistles in mid-play. About a minute 21 now with the clock stopped, and we'll, see, we'll sort this one out. The penalty's going to go against Homewood. Looks like the momentum. Offsides. Offsides. Is that that encroachment problem we've had again? It's like Jay Roberson uh, getting his leg worked on there. That last uh, sack near the two-yard line might have taken its toll. There's our work on there. There's our Homewood mascot, Paul pa uh, Paul Patrick. Paul Patrick. Paul for Paul Revere and Patrick for Patrick Henry, and um, he's a mascot that's brand new this year to the Patriot family. Flag on the play again. Now they had a first and five. Had a first and five. After that encroachment penalty. We'll have to see what the call is this time. It looks like, like against Irwin we're again. going again. The referee signals offsides. They could be possibly lining up in that neutral this zone. This is now a first down. So Irwin with 120 remaining in the quarter, Fred, has first and 10 at the Homewood 10-yard line. <laughs> 24 Horn, the ball carrier, right up the middle. He's very, very close. It's going to be tough to see how tough he is. Like Jay, no, Jay Roberson is uh, laying on the bench on the sideline, and the coach looks like he may be working on what might be a a little bit of a pull or a cramp on that uh, on that right leg and that right thigh. We hope that he's uh, healthy and able to come back in. All right, call it second and a foot. Jody Duncan on the quarterback keeper, and they signal a touchdown. Touchdown for Owen. Well, you wouldn't call it an outstanding drive, but would you you would call it 
taking advantage of your opportunities. Irwin starting at the 30 yard line, throwing a pass play, gaining 10 yards uh, up the middle, and two five yard penalties. Absolutely. Well, with 44 seconds remaining now in the first period, it makes the score 14 to 6. Chris Wilson is in to attempt the extra point for Irwin. It's a good snap. The kick is down and good. So that makes it 14-7. Well, Homewood jumping out to a, a, a quick lightning strike, two touchdowns, and then with uh, some problems, a, a quarterback sack that, that pulled down Jay, and we had to kick from deep within our own end zone, a short punt, a couple of penalties, those things combined to give Irwin that score. Just that quickly, Irwin is back in it. I don't know if you would expect them to be able to drive, say, 70 yards. However, they prove they can go 30 yards with a little help from a, a penalty Well, or there's two. no question about it. And to the Homewood coaching staff, that means this is a brand new ball game. And it also tells them something else. Ir uh, Homewood came out sharp in the first in the first uh, ten and a half minutes of this game. All of a sudden, they're up 14 to nothing, and it looks like an easy Friday night in Waldrop Stadium, and they get a little sloppy. Two penalties in a row gives Irwin a first down on the 10. All of a sudden, it's 14 to 7, and it's no laughing matter all of a sudden. It's an interesting alignment here that Irwin uses on the kickoff. They've got that old uh, Harvard huddle look. They spread back out now into their positions, and Chris Wilson's ready to kick them off. We have uh, Robert Davis back for Homewood, flanked by Alvin Skipper, Brian Greer, and it looks like Skipper will take it in at about the 16-yard line, picking his way up to about the 31-yard line. Xavier Hunter on the tackle for Irwin. Talking to Coach Ferris before the game, I asked him about that kickoff type alignment. He said he likes to use it because at some point in time he may kick the onside from that very position, uh, from that very, very uh, lineup. The onside kick. Yeah. Uh, the kicker is very good at kicking, and then they run ahead of the ball. Well, we've got us a new quarterback in. It looks like uh, the problem that Jay had may have been uh, may have been a little more serious than we had hoped. West Steed is the quarterback, and his give is to Robert Davis. Davis over right tackle. And uh, we're playing sort of sort of bummed up here, Fred. I know West has a severely sprained ankle. Looks as Jay Robertson obviously with a, some kind of problem on his right leg. He's working on it right now, though, and he's testing it out. Looks as though Jay is running on the sideline trying to, yeah, he's, trying he's, to get it loose. He might have taken a shot on that quarterback sack. Might have taken a game. shot. Well, that's the end of the quarter with a score of 14 to 7 Homewood. We'll be back after one of these, one, a message from one of our commercial sponsors. You're watching Homewood Patriot Football. This fall, enter the Pepsi bodacious back-to-school sweepstakes and win a free limo to and from school. It's Bo Jackson. School was never like this. Or a $1,000 shopping spree. School was never like this. And best of all, Pepsi will give the lucky winner up to $100,000 towards college. School was never like this. Shh. The Pepsi bodacious back-to-school sweepstakes. School was never like this. Didn't I just say that? Enter the Pepsi bodacious back-to-school sweepstakes. So, when was the last time you were screened for cancer? I don't think I've ever been screened for cancer. And why not? Never had the time. It only takes two hours at Princeton's new cancer screening center. I uh, never had the money. <clears throat> it only costs $48. I never had a reason. Right, because it always happens to the other guy. Guess I don't have an excuse. I guess not. These days, there's no reason not to get screened for cancer. Call us for an appointment. Back at Waldrop Stadium here with a score, Homewood 14, Irwin 7. Homewood moving now from its own 38-yard uh, line. Wes Steed is the quarterback if you've just joined us. Jay Roberson still out with what appeared to be a sore right thigh or right uh, calf muscle. Number 80 for Irwin on that play. Brian Burns along with uh, that man again, Jay Wigley, taking uh, Wes taking Wes Steed down. Homewood trying to utilize the option play. Uh, well, it's going to bring up, uh, see if we can set the, the down and yardage. Looks like third and about two. 
for the Patriots. Wes has the play now in from the Homewood sideline. During that timeout, Coach uh, Larry Ferris out on the field uh, cheering his defense on, basically laying down the law to them that they're back in this game, but they need to stop Robert Davis, and they just, I believe they just They may did. have. Who was it that got the first hand on him? I missed his number, but he, he just hung him up long enough. That was number 42 streaking in there. Patrick Renda coming in, forcing hard from the corner, and the interior, the Irwin defense doing the rest of the job. Well, it looks, like we'll, uh, it looks like we'll definitely punt at this point. Mike mentioned that Robert Davis in the first quarter had nine carries for 112 yards, Fred, so already uh, off to a to a hot pace tonight. Brian Greer now is back to punt. Irwin placing 10 men on the line. Brian gets the punt away and it's end over end, but short. Takes a sideways bounce. It looks like it's going out of bounds at the Irwin 39 yard line. Again, Homewood, uh, Homewood, I think at this point, Fred needs to regroup a little bit. I think uh, they do. I think and I'm, I'm not trying to be a, a press box coach. Things are moving quickly, and uh, we got caught in our own end zone uh, way back deep in the first quarter and allowed them to score. I think it's uh, changed the tone of the game. Homewood had it their way I said, for the first uh, nine and a half, ten minutes, and then all of a sudden one bad punt one sack, and it's a different ball game. Well, that was a 23-yard punt by Brian, not the normal punter for us. The give to Brasher off the left side. He fights his way for three or four yards. Elvin Skipper on the tackle. Jonathan Hammaker also on the tackle. Like Irwin's starting to utilize that wing T offense, and uh, they're not playing as tentatively as they did at the be at beginning of the game. I'm not sure that they weren't a little intimidated by Robert Davis and his statistics. I think you're absolutely right, and, and rightly so. You know, Coach Gann mentioned in the paper earlier this week that we have not seen a wing T offense this year, and that's going to take some adjusting. Second and about six. Duncan gives to Jason Horn. Stopped by Scott Hogue. Michael Coggin also to the assist on that tackle. Looks to be at the 40. Jonathan Hemmicker also in on that tackle. Irwin at the 44. That play didn't look like a lot, but it gained about four and a half yards. Well, call it third and five now, and this one would be one where uh, it would be Good time for Homewood to bow their necks a little bit. It, it sure would. I look for Irwin to use that rollout pass or perhaps a, a lead play of some kind. They've had some some success with it, except for the overthrow. Duncan's back to pass, and he overthrows his intended receiver out on the left side. That was Randy Gray. He was by himself. He had stopped just short of the coverage. But Jody Duncan overthrows, and that brings up fourth and five for the Irwin Eagles, and they'll bring in their punting team. like a mix up there between the Jody Duncan and his receiver. Well, Brian Randy Greer and Robert Davis dropped back to receive this punt. That one was almost blocked. Brian takes it in at the 26 yard line. He's good for about two yards. But number 64 for Irwin, Jason Duckett brought him down after just a two yard gain. You know, Barry, I see a difference in this, this Irwin team but even on their special team, Jason Duck at that time making a, what I guess you would call an enthusiastic tackle of uh, Brian Deer. Uh, this Homewood staff is looking for uh, an uh, a consistent drive out of this offense right now to get this game, not that it's out of hand, but to get this game back on the, back in the tone they're looking for. Irwin's got quite a punting game going here. Jody Duncan, the one-man workhorse for Irwin, punts of 53 and 38 yards. Wes on the quarterback rollout. Overthrows his intended receiver, Alexander Adamson, out at the 50-yard line. Pressure that time from Irwin's Patrick Renda. Uh, Wes did a good job of uh, sidestepping a possible sack and uh, got the ball off. Got the ball off. It looked as though his receivers didn't, didn't read his mind or didn't play the play. Uh, he was in trouble. Uh, the Irwin defensive backs turned them loose, and they didn't go downfield. Michael Walden into the game for Homewood. So we have an injured eagle on the play. 
number 68, Jay Wigley. Irwin can ill afford to lose that man. Michael Walden into the game looks like he's going to split out as a flanker on the right side, or at least that's what it looked like. Michael's a sophomore and has worked out some in practice at the quarterback position as well. Jay Roberson now uh, looks as though he's checking into the game. We'll have to see how that uh, turns out. Wes coming up. Right, Jay Wigley up and moving, walking off the field under his you own know, that, power. That would be a key loss if, if Wigley did not come back in. Mm, he sure has would. been instrumental in the Irwin defense. He and uh, Jody Duncan are, are absolute keys to that defense. And of course, Duncan is the key to the offense as well. Well, Jay Roberson back in at quarterback. He has Dusty Smith and Robert Davis behind him. Dwight Whalen split out wide to the left. The give us to Robert Davis. Going nowhere. Met head up at the 27-yard line, Fred. Well, looks like Danny Rayleigh. Chris. For the Eagles, along with 74, Torrance Thomas. Two yes. of the guys Coach Fair said would have to play well tonight if Irwin was to have a chance against Homewood. Ryan Greer checks into the game now, replacing... Michael Walden. Set the time for you. Seven minutes and 47 seconds and the clock running now. 7.47 remaining in the half from Waldrop Stadium here in Homewood. We're glad you're with us tonight. Jay's looking at third and ten now. Bootleg. Just wide to Dwight Whalen out on the right side. So Homewood will have to punt it away. Jay Roberson didn't show any Ill, Ill effects of that um, injured knee on that pass. None at all. His mobility is still very, very good. Well, it's a little bit of a high snap, but Jay gets it away, and that's a much better punt than the first two that we had. It goes out of bounds. They'll mark it right at the 38-39 yard line of Irwin. We have had uh, a 34-yard punt by Jay Roberson and backs Irwin up just a little bit. Previous punts of 27 and 23 yards, but well, that's going to pump the average up just a little bit, and we need that. The kicking sure, right. game could become a very important part of this game. You know, that hot shot offense has really slowed down since the first opening minutes of this game. It has, and I'm not sure that the Homewood defensive coaches really believe this Irwin offense can drive on them 70 yards, 60 yards. Well, they give us to Randy. Horn. Sorry, Jason Horn, number 24. Eric Rebold's in on the tackle for Homewood. Now, it's interesting tonight, Barry, we've got several Homewood Patriots playing both ways for Coach Gerald Gant. We've got uh, Dusty Smith going both ways. Damon Southward is. Eric Rebold's is. Uh, Greer, Jason, Brian Greer, Greer. Brian Greer. Uh, Lee Thompson doing uh, pulling double duty. Well, Jody Duncan overthrew by about 10 yards that time. He had two guys back, but then again, so did we. Yeah, your point is absolutely uh, a, a good one. Lee Thompson, uh, West Steed playing both ways, Elvin Skipper playing both ways, and a lot of those fellows playing uh, in less than 100% condition. That's true. Uh, Eric Rebels injured early in the game on the kickoff, as a matter of fact coming back to uh, tighten that chin strap and uh, continue to play. Well, on a third and seven play, Jason Horn fumbled the ball at about the 45-yard line, but it was fallen on by number 24, well, by Jason, by Jason Horn, Horn himself. Came back Eric Rebold's on the stop. Also in on the stop, uh, number 42, Eugene Oliver for Homewood, and Damon Southward as well. Excellent defensive play, and Irwin's going to send in the punting team. Damon Southward did a, did an outstanding job that time, playing off the block, filling the hole, uh, and closing in on the for the tackle for Homewood. Uh, if not, uh, it possibly could have been a larger, larger game. Well, Brian Greer is back, and Jody Duncan has the ball to punt it. He gets away another outstanding punt for the Irwin Eagles, and Brian's going to let it go, and all we can say is we hope Could that it goes, but they're going to down it inside the one, two, 
two yard line, one yard line. So Homewood once again backed up into its own territory and we'll face about 98 yards worth of grass before we can get to pay dirt next Duncan time. Duncan that time, they've seen something in the films uh, that has told them that when there is no rush, take your time. Duncan is one of those punters that can place the ball. He doesn't kick it as hard every time as some other punters do. Therefore, he took something off of that. When he paused, when he saw no big rush coming, he paused, allowed his men to get downfield to cover the punt, and also took something off the kick that didn't put it in the end zone. And as a result, they have Homewood backed up on their own, looks to be a three yard line, is that correct? On their own one yard line, rather. Yeah, it's hard at this angle to see the spot, but it appears that we've got about 98, 90, 98 yards to go. 98 yards to go, and on a, in an offense where you came out so well the first quarter, and then things have slowed down considerably, uh, that's got to be frustrating, looking up there and knowing you've got to go 99 yards. When things aren't, they may not be clicking, may not be hitting on all cylinders. Not that they're playing badly, because they're not. They just haven't quite put it together as they did in the first quarter. Well, with five minutes and 55 seconds remaining, there's a timeout on the field. This appears to be the official timeout for the water break. Getting confirmation that that is indeed the case. Score, if you're just joining us, is Homewood 14 and Irwin 7, and we've got a fight on our hands. Certainly do. Came no out the first two minutes. Tonight. First two minutes, it looks as though it would be a large a blowout, actually. You know, from that, uh, from the wide shot of the field at this particular point, you'll notice uh, the next time you see the wide shot, you'll notice that there is what appears to be a pathway leading off up into the woods, and in fact, that is exactly that. They paved a new parking lot on the high side of Waldrop Stadium for the visitors who come to our football games, and it's a lighted, very safe pathway, and uh, just part of the uh, improvement package here at Waldrop Stadium for the 90-91 season. Elvin Skipper in the backfield now. Robert Davis is going to pass on first and ten from his own end zone. Brian Greer was there, but good defending on part of number 12, Dabney Hunter by Irwin. There you see a side Elvin's, sideline shot. Elvin Skipper is in the backfield now with Jay Roberson. Davis is hurt. Robert Davis Dustin out, Smith. getting a little bit of attention on that. Uh, looks to be a. This will be getting a little attention on a leg, possibly an ankle, pounding the uh, pounding the the bench there. Looks so Robert might be a little more a little more injured than he likes to admit. Well, Elvin has the ball and brings it out to about the four yard line, three and a half yard line. Patrick Rinda on the stop for the Irwin Eagles, and that's going to bring up third and about eight. Fred, so uh, we're once again finding ourselves having to dig out of a pretty deep hole here. Very deep hole. Ball is now on the three yard line and we've got to go to the 11 for a first down. Oops. Well, There's movement on the line of scrimmage. Flags on the play. Clock stops with 4.58 remaining. Looks like somebody may have jumped in the Homewood line. Illegal procedure is the call. Be about half the distance the to the goal again. Line of scrimmage back down around the two. White Whalen in motion behind Jay Roberson. Jay gives to Elvin Skipper. Hit early and no going. Barely back to the line of scrimmage. Barely back to the line of scrimmage. Elvin Skipper was hit that time. No more than a yard out of the end zone. Danny Rayleigh on the tackle for uh, Irwin. Spun around right on the goal line. Right on the goal line. So it's very close to a very close to a safety. Well, Jay Roberson will punt now, and again his heels will be on the end line of the end zone. And Jay will check that out very carefully to make sure he knows exactly where his feet are. West Steed is in the ball game to snap it back. Damon Southwood blocking. It's a low pass from center, but Jay gets it away. An excellent punt and an excellent bounce. That's going to be a 63 or four yard punt from the line of scrimmage. And add 10 more to that because he was standing back in the end of his end zone. Just what the doctor ordered at this time in the game. On the, in the end zone on your own end line and get a kick like that. The type of thing that will inspire a defense. So Irwin takes over on its own 37-yard line. 
And that gives the Homewood defense just a little bit of breathing room. A 63-yard punt. You see them taking Robert Davis there into the uh, locker room for a little medical attention. We're not quite sure what the injury could be, but it looks as though looks as though they're going to take him in early and uh, give him some medical attention. The pass appeared to be incomplete. So we'll call it second and ten. We're going to see if we can get word from the Homewood locker room exactly what is uh, the problem that Jay has. Irwin, by the way, on the night so far has attempted six passes, one completion for 12 yards. So Jody Duncan now looks at a second and ten. The gift to number 35, Chris Wilson. And I'll tell you something, uh, Eugene Oliver was right there on the stop. He sure was. And Jonathan Hamaker as well. Both of them in there. Nobody was fooled on that play. As the clock runs in this first half of play with 324 now remaining. A much closer game than many of the many of the people in Waldorf Stadium expected but, early on. But for a 70 some odd yard run from scrimmage uh, in the first set of downs for Homewood, we'd be at a tie game right now. Jody Duncan rolls out to his left, looking to pass, being pursued by Eric Rebels. Rebels throws, throws the quarterback for a three-yard loss. Always in, always there. Go to the ball and look for Rebels. Outstanding job by Eric Rebels that time. Played off the blocker, got to the quarterback, wasn't fooled, and had good speed, good enough speed to, to catch Jody Duncan and throw him for a, for a big loss. Danny Callies is telling us from the sideline, Fred, that uh, Robert Davis had a weak ankle, a sort of a tentative feel to that ankle. And they may have taken him in to really tape that thing up. Well, Duncan gets his punt away, is asking for some help in terms of a roughing the kicker call. He will not get it. He will not get it. I don't see any flags down. The ball is out of bounds on the Irwin 45, on the Homewood 45-yard line. Or Homewood will take over with really excellent field position. Right. No penalty on that play due to the fact that he muffed the snap from center. Made it appear as though he might have to run for his life and didn't have enough room to get it off. At that point, you become not a punter, but more of a ball carrier. Well, a 22-yard punt that time for uh, Jody Duncan, the quarterback and free safety for Irwin. Jay Roberson in the game now. He has Dusty Smith and Elvin Skipper in the backfield. The give is to Dusty up the middle. Hard yardage. He fights for about three yards. Brian Burns on the tackle for Irwin now. Well, this Irwin defense Two is turning nasty, Barry. Just getting, just getting after it right now. They're tough. Two minutes now on the clock and counting in the first half of play. It's a gain of four for Dusty on that. Call it second and six, a long six. Jay looks. He throws just off the fingertips of Brian Greer, and to tell you the truth, Fred, almost intercepted. Just about. A almost intercepted. That little quick snap uh, pass to Brian. Xavier Hunter that time getting one hand on it also and it seemed to hang in the air for just a few minutes just for a while several people having a shot at it clock stopped now with the incomplete pass 146 remaining it's third and six for the Patriots moving at their 49 yard line Jay on the fake caught from behind He'll lose about nine on that one. Stop made by number 62, Chris Crary for the Eagles. Also, Brian Burns. That time, the play fake didn't hold the linebackers, didn't hold uh, Crary and Burns. And Homewood again looks at fourth and long yardage. Well, and Irwin takes a timeout. I'm sure their coaches want to talk about what they'll do with the remaining one minute and 34 seconds in this first half of play from Waldrop Stadium here in Homewood. We uh, still don't have an official word yet on Robert Davis. Uh, again, if you're just joining us and you notice that Robert's not in the ball game, the word is that he had a weak ankle. I guess that ankle was tentative the way it felt to him. 
uh, he was expressing his frustration on the sidelines. You could tell he Pounding. was angry that he couldn't be back in the play. Pounding the bench. Uh, we can hope only that it's not serious and that he's having it taped up and maybe we'll see him in the second half. It's been a very, very, very physical game tonight. Eric Rebel's injured on the on the kickoff. Jay Roberson uh, taking a couple of series on the bench. And now Robert Davis uh, going to the to the locker room early in the early in the second quarter. Very physical game, uh, and I think that's what both Coach Ferris and Coach Gann expected tonight. You know, um, one thing they may not have suspected, and we mentioned it early on in this coverage, was that the kicking game could be such a key in this ball game. So far, Irwin has punted the ball five times. Homewood has punted the ball four times, and that indeed has been the story of the game: the field positioning as a result of those punts. And this will be the fifth punt for Homewood as Jay Roberson drops back to kick it away again from his own 28-yard line. It's a high snap, but he gets it away, and he gets a beauty away. It hangs way up high. Number 12, Dabney Hunter, bobbles the ball and then falls back on it. Irwin has recovered the ball. 88 there for Homewood. Michael, Michael Flint. Flint and also Mark, uh, Mark Show. In on the uh, in on the tackle there with that ball rolling around. Well, 124 on the clock now. It's up to Irwin to see what they can do with the remaining roughly minute and a half before the halftime here. That was a 39-yard punt by Jay Roberson. Uh, once again, I think uh, I think the kicking game is, is uh, turning out to be a decisive factor, and at least in the first half. Of in, the in the first half, as you, if you remember, we had Homewood first down on their own one-yard line, punting from their own end zone, and now we have Irwin on their own 19, and that was basically due to punts because no neither team has mounted a, a sustained drive since the first quarter. Jason Horn, the ball carrier that time, and Dusty Smith on the stop. Dusty uh, looking for a well-deserved rest at halftime. Played both ways most of the game tonight. As you mentioned, Brad, mm -hmm. so many others have played uh, have played two ways tonight. And played very well. Jody Duncan now has second and nine. Second and nine from his own 20-yard line as Irwin moves the ball with 40 seconds remaining, and the clock moves. And off number 22, Brad Brasher. The give to Brasher now, off right tackle. Lee Thompson making Lee a Thompson good Lee Thompson in on that stop. Also, Jonathan Hammaker in, number 79. You're in for a treat at halftime, ladies and gentlemen. You'll hear from two bands, as Homewood calls timeout with 32 seconds remaining. You'll hear from two bands. <clears throat> the one we're most interested in, of course, is the Homewood band, uh, Alabama's ambassadors to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade again this year. The band under the direction of Pat Morrow, and they've got an absolutely outstanding halftime show for you. So we invite you to stay tuned for that. That's right. They always, always put on a good show. They were out here in early, early August practicing just like the football team, well, as it, were the, the cheerleaders also. As you can see, Irwin brought their band as well. So we have both bands here tonight, and uh, that makes for a good halftime performance. We're looking forward to it. What we want to do is play a little hard defense here for the next 32 seconds. Make sure that when we go into the locker room at halftime, the score remains just the way it is now, and that is 14 to 7, Homewood. I'm not sure how many timeouts Homewood has at this point. If you're a coach and you stop them for no gain on this play, and you call one more timeout, that makes them punt. Hopefully, you either go after the punt, perhaps they've seen something, or look for the return. And we know Homewood plays good special teams and could possibly be setting it up for the return. Give to Brasher around the right side. Looks like Elvin Skipper in on the stop. Like he has uh, gotten his first down. Damon Southward also in on that stop. It looks like he's going to have a first down. Looks like a flag on the play, though. We'll wait to see what it is. Looks to be against Irwin. The flag is in Irwin's backfield, and they're headed that way. Holding against Irwin. And that takes it back, Fred, all the way to the 10 yard line. So, a little bit of breathing room. Let's see if we can set the yardage for you. That's going to be third down and right at what, uh, 18? Third and 18, third and 19. Homewood has called another timeout now. 20 seconds left on the clock with the clock stopped. And the score again, 14 to 7. That's the first penalty for Irwin in the game tonight. 
Homewood has four, two of them, as I recall, coming in quick succession in the first quarter on an encroachment problem. Which actually aided in uh, Irwin's touchdown. Aided two in the in touchdown. Row. Backed us up. The Homewood defensive coach setting strategy. They may be setting that uh, some type of strategy, hopefully to get their hands on the ball one more time before the first half ends. 20 seconds to go. Don't have a don't do not have a lot of time to work with, and I'm sure Irwin, on the other hand, realizes that and would be just as happy for the clock to run out. I think they would probably consider themselves lucky going into the locker room, just trailing by a touchdown after that after that ominous start. 